Hi, this is Dr. Andrew Chrysler teaching ECE 2200 Electrical Circuits 1 at Idaho State University. In this video, which may be slightly longer than some of the other ones, I'm going to discuss how to use voltage controlled switches in LT Spice so that we can do some simulations of circuits which contain a capacitor. So the motivation for this is to be able to simulate a circuit such as this one, which is in the Ulibi Circuit Analysis and Design Textbook, page 285, which has a single pole double throw switch. And in that problem, they simulate or they use analytical methods to find the charging and the discharging of a capacitor. But we want to do this uh, in LT Spice, which is actually a little more tricky than you might expect. And so we're going to have to learn how to do two things. One is how to use the voltage controlled switch. The other is how to use pulsed voltage sources. So let's get ahead with that. Um, because I know a lot of people may be watching this later, I want to go straight into a quick summary of the voltage controlled switch and how to make it. Add a component, search for the switch, add it to the schematic, right click on that switch. You must change the value name. I suggest something like my SW, my SW1, my SW2. It should be different for every switch. You change that via right click clicking on that switch. Then you must add a spice directive that is related to that switch. That spice directive is going to appear on your schematic just like your transient simulation uh, um, spice directive will. And in that directive, you're going to need something like this that says dot model. That's telling LT Spice how to model your switch. Then the name of your switch, that's the name that you selected for the value up here. And then you have SW because this is a SW switch model and you're gonna need at least the following things, an R on, an R off, and a voltage threshold. There's more that you could add. I'll leave it to you to look in the help for, to change those things. So let's see uh, what this might look like in an actual circuit. Uh, so I have a circuit with a single pole, single throw switch like this. So in LT Spice, I need to add a voltage controlled switch and I need to add a voltage source which controls that switch. Let's see how to do that. So um, we have the two parts, right? Voltage controlled switch S1 and that um, the instance is S1 and then the uh, voltage con the voltage source, which is here. All right, so, so let's start with the switch. So how do we do this? Right, I'm gonna add this to the schematic, right? That's with F2. You can see it has this instance name here. And then you also need to change the value name to something specific for that switch. You can get to that menu and the, changing those by right clicking somewhere on that switch itself. And then you can access this menu right here, okay? Um, the terminals here and here, these red ones, right? These ones connect to the rest of your circuit. The ones with the plus and the minus, these are gonna connect to the voltage source, which we'll talk about later. And then somewhere on your, your schematic, you're gonna need to have this spice directive. The meaning of the spice directive is as follows. First, you have dot model. This is telling the spice how to handle this particular switch. You need a value name here. This is what you um, change when you add it to your schematic. You can adjust these R on and R off, but these are the resistance when the switch is on or off. So when you want the switch on or connected, it should be a really low resistance so that the current can go through it easily. When you want it off, it should be a very high resistance. This could be one meg, mega ohms, even up to 10. This is another note for you right here in LT Spice. If you just type M, LT Spice assumes that's milli. If you want mega ohm, you need to write meg. So for a large one, one meg. Lastly, you need some kind of threshold. And well, the meaning of this could be when the plus terminal of your switch, so that's this terminal right here, when that plus terminal is above your threshold voltage, you're going, the switch will act like it's in the on. It's going to use the on resistance. When the plus terminal is below this threshold voltage, it's going to operate with this R off resistance. There's at least one more value that you can write in here. And if you want to learn more, you can search in the help. So again, the summary, add a component, search for the switch, add it to your schematic, 
right click on the switch, you need to change the value name. The value name should be different for each switch that you have on your schematic. Then hit the spice directive uh, by going S and then add a directive that looks something like this. Again, this, my SW, that should match whatever you selected for the value name. All right, so what about the voltage source that controls the voltage controlled switch? All right, you're gonna um, add that source, okay? <clears throat> and then you are going to add a normal voltage source. Then you're gonna right click to get this another menu. You're gonna um, right click to pull this up. Normally you'd hit just a DC value, but if you hit advanced, it's gonna uh, pop open a, another menu. And on that menu, you have a drop down. Okay, so you can get to that drop down. That drop down is gonna be up here. It's the style of the voltage source, and you're gonna look for pulse from the drop down. There's a whole bunch of stuff that you can change in that pulse menu. Uh, v initial and V on, that's the starting voltage and the voltage that it changes to. The delay is the time before it changes to the next voltage. The rise and the fall, that's how long it takes to go between those two. For ideal uh, pulses, you're gonna make that pretty small. I chose one nanosecond here. The on is how long it stays in the on state. The period is the time before the cycle repeats and end cycle is the number of cycles. If you have a, um, a short simulation, you aren't gonna get through the end cycles. This is just how many it could do if your simulation is long enough. Here is another uh, little picture that shows what the meaning of each one of those is. I got this from someone called I Explore Silicon Valley. Very nice. Uh, they have another um, helpful way of, of doing capacitors in this video or in, in that website. All right, so here's a summary of the steps for adding this particular uh, voltage controlled source or the voltage source which controls the voltage controlled switch. You're gonna hit F2 to add a component. Search for the voltage source. This is your normal DC voltage source that we've been using uh, previously in the class. You're gonna right click on that voltage source. You're gonna select advanced from that menu that pops up. And then there's a drop down at top. You select pulse from the drop down, and then you select the pulse parameters based on how you want the switch controlled. So this is the point. Once you have this arranged, the pulse here, the pulse, the voltage controlled pulse, that is going to control the switch. And this is where you're going to uh, select, carefully select the, um, the voltages so that you can get your switch to operate in the way that a problem statement asks. So for example, it, but going back to that Ulibi one, it says that you have a switch that's um, it's moved into position two after being in position one for a long time. And then it returns to uh, position one at time 10 seconds. So it does some charging and then some discharging. So you're going to write a function that controls a pulse so that the switch turns into switch two position uh, immediately and then into position one and at uh, time 10 seconds. Yeah. So <clears throat> this um, kind of acts actually as a single pull double throw switch. And so previously we saw how to do a single pull single throw. Um, however, we can model a, a single pole double throw switch by using two SPST switches. So let's see how to do that. Here is a schematic that has two voltage controlled switches. You can see that I changed the value name to S1 and S2 in order to differentiate between those two. I have a pulse connected to both of them. Now in order to get them to act in the opposite directions, you can see that the pulse source is connected to the plus on this switch and it's connected to the minus on this switch. Both of the voltage controlled sources are grounded on the other end, but because I connected them in opposite directions, they're going to uh, fire in different ways. You can see that both switch one and switch two both have a spice directive down here, and that value name is different for each one. However, the rest of this is the same. And using a method like this, we are able to use two single pole, single throw switches to model the double pole, double throw switch that's in here. Okay, so that single pole, double throw switch is modeled by two switches down below. And using this simulation, which will be included at least in my classes uh, Moodle page, 
you'll be able to check this simulation so that you can work this for other homework problems. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.